Okay guys, here's DS Connie flap test number two video. Uh, this is showing after some refinements to the uh, drive rods uh, and how they connect and a little fine tuning to see a little bit better operation. But we still have some major problems with the slop that's in it that will cause fluttering. First of all, let me show you a little improved movement. You can see the flap drops much lower now. It's at about 43 degrees, which is where it's supposed to be. And there's takeoff position and flight. Okay, so in this system for driving it, there are two main uh, pieces coming off for the servo arms. I made these out of G10. As you can see, they're extremely flexible, it turns out. And even though it's uh, 60 thousandths, and that's part of a problem. Uh, the other one that I made here is made out of, is now two layers of 60 thousandths G10 with a 10 ounce uh, carbon fiber uh, inlay between the two of them. And this puppy just doesn't move. I'm sitting there pulling pretty hard and it doesn't move. Uh, you can quickly see the way it's connected, the two holes. The outer one towards the end, of course, drives the support tubes. The inner one that's offset three and a half degrees, that pulls down on the flap so that you can get your drop. Uh, I'm going to turn it on its side. Now you could start to see some of the connections. Here are the drive tubes. I'm going to extend the flaps all the way out. You can see the drives tubes. Uh, this, is, this is the main drive uh, push rod. It goes directly to the uh, support tube, which makes it an axial move. Um, wow kind of hard on full extension. Okay, um, we're going to now bring it in. You can see here a little bit better uh, where you have all of the connections. This up top is your main support. This is the pull to, for actuating and lowering the flaps. As you can see here, looking on the side of the flap, there isn't that much difference between the locations of the two hinge points, which is part of the problem. Uh, to get it a little bit better, I've had to go in, it may be a little difficult to see, but I've uh, soldered in some brass tubing here onto this, uh, but it still is quite wiggly. If you see it here, you can see that this thing moves back and forth and it's all due to the slot that happens to be inherent in this particular uh, design of having the two hinge points so close together. Any, I repeat, any type of, of tolerance whatsoever is causing this uh, slot. So when I go and bring it here, as you can see, I literally, oh, let me put my weight back on. I can literally, with a finger, easily push this up, which if I were to go into flight, this would sit there being fluttering and destroy itself in, in a heartbeat. Um, but I'm going to go back and go through run of, there is fully retracted takeoff, landing. Now let's see if we can get a good shot. We'll do it from the underneath. Very attracted. There's takeoff and landing. Again, you can see there's quite a bit of movement. 
in that little bit of an area. I am using brass tubes at the moment which are flexible unto themselves, mainly because they're cheap, quick, and just a proof of concept. To make them sturdier, I'll have to go and uh, use stainless steel tubes, which I believe is the most rigid that I can get, and they're easily then silver soldered. Uh, connections here. Again, you can see fairly clearly the tube uh, that soldered onto the quick link that uh, provides the uh, hinging. The only other thing that I think I can really do here is have a piece of stainless steel made such that uh, it's a precision hole with maybe three thousandths. Right now I'm looking at eight to ten thousandths uh, slot between the 072 wire and the piece of brass tubing. Uh, for very quickly you can see I just soldered on a uh, 256 screw to give me a point of reference in uh, for the drive. Same thing on this side. Up here at the top you see these are very very close um, as far as large slots that had to be made to allow for the arm. The arm is over 3.5 inches in length. So that's the problems I'm now looking at and how I can do it. I think the next step is seeing uh, if I can get those stainless steel parts manufactured and see if that helps. Uh, either that or I may just go in and add a control horn that extends below the bottom of the flap so I'm moving the hinge points uh, much farther apart. That may help, but it sure wouldn't uh, help the appearance, of course. So far throughout the DS Connie, I've had zero uh, actuations being shown because I'm using RDS, so I'd really like not to put control horns at the bottom. Uh, it is kind of neat, though, watching the, the Fowler flap just from the point of the cool effect. Okay guys, later. Thanks for watching test video number two.